tried adding her, and uh, she's just not coming through. So let me try one more time. Let's see if she'll pop on. Okay, we're going to go ahead and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to bless this message in Jesus' mighty name. Here she Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we praise you, we honor you, we glorify you. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ's name, amen. Hey, amen. Shanoa, God Thank bless you. you made it. We got yeah. Alice, Mary, Trivia in the house. And uh, there's some more coming in. Praise God. Shanoa has a uh, little bit of breaking news going on. You know how God has warned us, people. And you know that if you've been with me for the past four years, uh, you know what God has said is going to happen, will happen, it is happening. And uh, he warned us about water, 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 then there will be no water. Uh, fire, 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 fire. He showed me a lot of earthquakes, a lot of devastation. Now, what's happening today, Shanoa? Today, Kim, there's a volcano. It's called Mount Ruang in Indonesia, and it erupted. It first erupted um, on Tuesday, and it's erupted four times on Wednesday, which was yesterday. Officials are worried that part of the volcano is going to fall into the ocean and cause a major tsunami. They've already evacuated over 800 people. Well, that, that could definitely happen. So we keep our prayers up for Indonesia and all the people over there in Jesus' name and whoever that may affect. Um, before we get started, I wanted to wait till a few people popped on, but this happened back in 2020. I just showed you guys on the other uh, live we were on, but this was in 2020 when God gave me these words. And the thing about God, even though it may have been in 2020, to God, that was like five seconds ago and it was really like five seconds ago it never his word really honestly never changes and it's just as powerful now as it was when he gave it to me you understand so it's the same so i'm going to read this to you what with my paper my edges are kind of uh kind of some of them are kind of ripped right here so it's kind of hard but but i still got it i still got it and it has not changed and i'm gonna read it to you here we go God says, why are you anxious? Why are you anxious? My word has told you there's nothing to fear. If you abide in me and let my words abide in you, ask what you will it be done for you. I do all things according to my word and my purposes. We do things together. I, I lead, you follow. You step, I reveal. Like a shepherd, I, I, I lead you. Through the valleys, I guide you. You don't know the way you're going, but I light your path to lustrous green pastures. So rest in me, rest in me. Calm your mind. Focus on my word. You'll find peace there. Let my words and my spirit comfort you. Don't worry about the things that you see on this earth. Never forget that I am in total control. Humble your heart and draw near to me. Even when dangers are all around you, I am your shield and your buckler. Keep your attention on me, says the Lord. I am coming. I'm coming with, with judgment for the evil and with rewards for the faithful. Do not think that I'm asleep and don't see what's going on. All things happen at my appointed time. And who can speed up my hand or who could slow it down? I know what is best and I do what is best. There is nothing too hard for me to accomplish. Abide in me, I say, abide in me, and I will direct your steps. Don't lean your ears to the whispers of others. Lean your ears to my word and rest there, says the Lord. I lead you. Now listen, I lead you by example. Oh, my goodness. Let me stop it. Here. You know what I was saying? Hold on. I'm sorry. You know what I was telling y'all earlier in the barn? Honestly, God. Now, this was in 2020. Now, you just hit me right now. Remember I told you in the barn, God, actually, I had to, I experienced everything. I experienced like an apprentice. 
He gave me this in 2020. I lead you by example. He's not lying. I lead you by example. To truly understand me, you must share in my sufferings and abide in me. I'm going to tell you, this is for you too, y'all. But when he gave me this, I didn't have my family, none of them. That was not normal for me or anybody in my family. That was not normal ever. And uh, I was doing some deep suffering at this one, but this is for you too. He gave it to me for everybody. To truly understand me, you must share in my sufferings and abide in me. You have the choice to share in my love or not to. To understand my love, because we all want to understand God's love, right? To understand my love, you must share in my sufferings and endure. And endure. The way to destruction, oh, it's easy. It's real easy. The way to destruction is easy. And it's a more comfortable road, but it leads to a dead end. The narrow road is hard. It's uncomfortable, but it leads to eternity with God where there's no more pain, no more suffering. When you abide in me, even when it's hard, then you have a greater understanding of just how much I love you. Remember, you're not traveling that narrow road by yourself. I'm always there to help you. You're going to face many, many obstacles that you will not understand. And I will allow them until you learn the necessary lessons that mature you. Then you can help others. Love me as I've loved you. Just like teaching your children, you're my child. And I will teach you the necessary lessons to mature you. And you will have greater understanding. I will never force your hand, but I ask you to take my hand and walk with me. I will never leave you, says the Lord. Now, that has never changed. Now, I'm going to tell you something. And, and, and see what I mean? This was in 2020. I got saved in 2020. Okay? And I was going through hell at that time. Big time. And he, and he, I was just telling you in the barn how he really does teach me everything by example, hands on example. And that's the way he is. And I'm telling y'all, you, you can't make this stuff up in Jesus' name. You understand? So God is good all the time. You just all can't the time. all the time. So, what we're going to talk about tonight, I want to tell y'all, I couldn't make my lesson video today because there was my phone was not working with me. So we just did it when I just went live on YouTube an hour ago. We we went through it. Tomorrow, my husband fixed my phone. I should be able to put up the holy, the most holy place, the holy of holies. I should be able to do that tomorrow. And that's the last room we got to go through. And then Sunday in the barn, we're bring we're doing our Seder for the Passover because Monday's the Passover. That's when Jesus died. Monday, okay, April twenty second. So Sunday, we're having our Passover Seder in the barn. So go ahead and um, get all your ingredients. It's not a whole lot. And, and bring it ready. Have it ready. Get you a candle. Get your little candle. You need a little candle. Um, some wine. If you don't do wine, do grapefruit. You know, grape juice, I mean. Grape juice, I'm talking about. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And then be ready for your Seder. And what we do, the barn is, is our Google Meet room. That's where we have our Bible study and all that. That's our church, Okay. So you come in there at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. No, I'm sorry. Two, I'm talking about Sunday. Lord, I'm seeing what I'm saying. I'm trying to read stuff at the same time. Messing me up. Look up, Kim. Look up. Sunday's at 2 o'clock. You'll come in at 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday. Have your Seder plate and everything ready to go. We turn our cameras on and we do this Seder together. And it's really enjoyable, too. It really is. It's honestly, it's, it's a beautiful thing. So that's this Sunday at 2 in the barn. You go to JesusDoers.com. Scroll down till you see the red barn. The link is right there. It don't cost you nothing. Just come on in and bring your plate with you. And Shanoa will put on the website what you need to bring if you don't know. Now, wait. I know it costs for a leg of lamb. I, myself, I can't eat that little lamb. Look at him. I, look at him, man. I, I can't bring myself to do it, man. You know, so I use, I use steak or something. I, I use steak. You know, I, I just can't. I can look at him. I can look at him. I can't do it. So if you, if you want to eat lamb, then praise the Lord. But I'm I'm bringing a piece of steak bone. Amen. 
So anyway, let's go ahead and talk about how to spot a fool. Our words, man, our words. Oh my goodness. There's so much God wants to teach us about the words that come out of our mouth and our actions, how we treat other people. I told y'all earlier, God told me, well, his word says, love covers a multitude of sins. When I first got saved, I didn't know what that meant. And when he taught it to me, I understood, man. I understood. I understood. He's saying, how can your love cover a multitude of sins, Genoa? Because, Kim, as he told, uh, revealed to you, when we love Jesus Christ, we're going to obey him. And we're not going to sin because we want to please him and we're following him. And the Holy Spirit gives us an, the enabling power to follow him. Yes. So, well, amen. So love covers a multitude of sins. I'll never forget when he showed it to me. I was like, what does that mean? I love people, but I sure did a lot of sinning at the time. So I didn't understand. I'm like, so all the love, does that mean I'll go to heaven when I die? Because I did, you know, what the heck, what's good to me? No, when we love God, how do you show God you love him? You can say it, right? Y'all can say, God, I love you. But do you really? Do you really? Do you really love God? How do you show God that you love him? What did God say? You show me. I want you, I want you to show me. How do we show him? Shanoa. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. With a period at the end of that sentence. That's right. With a period at the end. And we obey. How do we know what to obey? We got to get in the word and find it, man. It's all through the word. And it ain't just 10 commandments, y'all. There's a lot of places. Be strong. Be humble. Be faithful. Put this down. Pick that up. You know what I'm saying? There's so much to do because God is like, Chiseling dirt off of us like asphalt. Asphalt's like concrete, man. Chisel, chisel, chisel. That's what we come out of, like a, a hole full of concrete. I used to be an asphalt truck driver. That's what I did for 10, 12 years, 12 years. Well, I hauled like gravel and crush and run and stuff like that. And asphalt, man, coming home stinking so bad and everything like the asphalt stinks. You understand when you're laying it down. Hot, hot job, man. Be 110 degrees in the cab of my truck because they took the air conditioning out, the brand new Peterbilts and the brand new freight liners. And they took our AC out. You ever tried hauling asphalt in, in a summertime when they took the air conditioning out your truck? It was hum inhumane. I thought it was, a, I don't know how I did it, but uh, it was a heck of a job. And I remember my truck used to get, the more we, we would pull up to the, the, the soaper thing, I forgot what you call it now. And we spray soap suds all in the back of our truck. Then we would go under the the, uh, the silo and get the asphalt in. Anyway, it would build, build, build. You know, anyway, by the end of the day, sometimes I had to take this big blue heavy pole that I could hardly pick up myself. And I was a, well, this was 20 some years ago. I was 135 pounds, you know, young little thing, man. And I picked that big blue pole up, I go and bam, 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 bust out the asphalt at the back of that truck. And uh, it was, it was, uh, it, it was very hard. And I get mad at all the guys around me. I'm like, ain't y'all supposed to come help me? And they're like, no, nope, that's your job, girl. No, then we, I worked with a lot of guys, and uh, no, they wouldn't help. It was every man for himself on that job. Bust that. Ever tried busting asphalt up with a blue pole? It's like concrete. It's hard. Very hard. Okay. But that's kind of like what we are. We're covered in that mess coming out of sin. Covered in. God has chiseled, chiseled, chiseled that mess off of us, man, by obeying God's commands and learning to walk in them. Okay. So the book of Proverbs is a great book. Ecclesiastes 2 for wisdom. Proverbs is a great book. It's a treasury of down to earth wisdom. That was given by the wisest man other than Jesus. Anybody know who the wisest man other than Jesus is in the comment section? Who is the wisest man other than Jesus? Anybody know? There's, there's such a lag, such a lag. Can you go to 1 Kings chapter 3, Shanoah? Sure. 1 Kings chapter 3. Thank you, Alice. Amen, sister. God's not a God of confusion. He's a God of order. Let's stay in order. Praise God. 
First Kings chapter three, ten through twelve. Ten through twelve. The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, Because you have asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall any like you arise after you. Amen. So thank you. Proverbs, it highlights the practical differences between godliness and wickedness, uh, between the way of the wise people and the way of the foolish people, the way they live and we live. So what is foolishness? What in the world is it? Uh, used in three different Hebrew words, Proverbs mentions fools more than 60 times. Do you know what I'm saying? So in the biblical view, foolishness has more of an ethical than an intellectual meaning. An ethical, not intellectual. Okay. It's about character, not your IQ. Okay. So to put it simply, Proverbs thinks any person who does not fear God is a fool. And what do we mean fear God, you know, uh, Bite our nails and shake to death. What do we mean, fear God? No, Kim. Hold him in respectful awe and reverence. That's right. Be real humble before him and reverence him. That's the fear of the Lord that more people need. I don't think a lot of even most of the church don't have it for him. That's not this church. This church is a we we got a good church. You know why? And Jesus started this church. He created it. He built it. He started. It. He teaches it. There's no school, y'all. I've never been to no theological school. I don't listen to other preachers. Why? Because Jesus told me. If Jesus told you what he told me and he anointed you to teach, why would you listen to anybody? Why would you? Knowing doggone well that there's so much destructive doctrines out there. Why would you? You know what I mean? Forget about it. But this is my anointing. This is what we're here to do, to hear God straight up and down. And we do. I do, you do. So fear of the Lord is a, a, a healthy reverence for him, man. And what's more, apart from earnestly seeking and acquiring wisdom, you know, a, a person's life is, we, we're sure to be marked by pride and regrettable, foolish behavior if we don't desire seeking wisdom from God. That's the first thing, honest to God. I, let me tell you something. This is another trick. I didn't know nothing about no Solomon when I got saved. I didn't know there was a Solomon. I did not know that. April 24th, 2020 was the day I got saved. I did not know there was no Solomon. I ain't I never heard of no Solomon. <clears throat> but you know what I did when I got saved in the front yard? When I had a, I had a, um, you got to be careful what I say. This right here to my head. You understand what I'm saying? Getting ready to take myself again because I just lost my family. And when I decided to give my life to him, I'm up and down the driveway, literally screaming. I just lost five family members. So I'm literally screaming to God. And I'm like, okay, God, I'm going to do this. I'm going I'm to give my life to you. I'm going to do this. But I need your wisdom. Honest to God, I was screaming that. I need your wisdom. I don't know your word. And I need to know you. I need to know. I mean, I was begging. Teach me, teach me, teach me, teach me. I like a crazy person. I was screaming for wisdom. And that's a trip now because I didn't know nothing about no Solomon the day I got saved. You know, but come to find out that's what we're supposed to do. D go for God's wisdom. You know what I mean? Go for it. Want it. Act, at least go for it. Want it. Scream for it, beg him for it, and then go get it. Go seek it, right? So how do you spot a fool? i got many ways in here I can spot a fool, but how do you spot a fool? Proverbs mentions many of the most common behaviors of a fool. Let's look at some of them behaviors. of See if you're a fool or not, okay? Um, they're, for example, they're very disinterested in the things of God. A fool is very disinterested. And this is not just a fool to us. This is a fool to God. This is a fool to God, meaning he thinks you're a fool, okay? God, 
Do you want to be a fool in the eyes of God? Uh, Proverbs, all in Proverbs. Proverbs 1, 7. Let's read it. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Amen. They, he said a fool ain't interested in nothing about God. That means you're a fool. Look at verse 132. Chapter 1, verse 32, I mean. For the turning away of the simple will slay them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. Amen. Let's go to chapter 20. We're we moving right along. Chapter 20, all in Proverbs. So they are, so far, they're disinterested in the things of God. Shanoah just read in 132, they are very complacent. Fine right here where I am. Thank you very much. Now we're going to look at 20 verse 3. It is honorable for a man to stop striving since any fool can start a quarrel. Amen. Go to 29, 11. So they're disinterested in things of God. They're complacent. They're very quick to quarrel and argue. Very quick to fly off at the mouth with ignorance. <laughs> 29.11. A fool bends all his feelings, but a wise man holds him back. Amen. Let's go to 14.9. So uh, he said they're quick to quick to quarrel and argue. They rage at other people. They rage, you know, um, and 14.9, they resist making amends. Go ahead and read it. Fools mock at sin. But among the upright, there is favor. Amen. Uh, let's see. Alice, can you go to Proverbs 10, 18 and type in there what you see a fool does? Uh, Marianne, you go to 23, verse 9. This is all in Proverbs. 23, verse 9. What does a fool do? Now, I can't remember who I gave what to now. So Y'all just have to listen real good. I think it's Alice, go to 1018. Mary, go to 23.9. So while we're doing that, these uh, they are disinterested in things of God. They're very complacent. They're quick to argue and quarrel. They rage at other people and they resist making amends. But the pro Proverbs that will emphasize Two enormous character flaws that shout out to the world. This person is a fool. <laughs> Amen. And one of those is reckless speech habits. Reckless speech habits. Proverbs show how fools make no attempt to guard their tongues. They, they spout out stupidity all the time. So what does 1018 say? They do what? 1018. Alice. No, Alice is supposed to type it up there. Okay. I ain't got time to wait for it. They lie. They lie. And and uh, Mary's was they. I'm sorry, I ain't got time to wait for it. They 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 mock. They lie and they mock. Uh, Shanoah, go to 2920. 2920. So they lie. They mock. An um, 18:6 says they're argumentative. Very argumentative. Thank you, Alice. So what you want to put is lie. They got lying, they lie. Yes. They lie. They're argumentative. They talk without thinking. <laughs> Amen. 2920. Do you see a man hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Amen. Go to 18.2. We'll be moving along quick. 18.2. A fool has no delight in understanding, but in, in expressing his own heart. Amen. 14.3. Turn in there now. In the mouth of a fool is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise will preserve them. Amen. 14. You don't got to say amen. I'm sorry, because we got more. We got to go fast. 14.7. Thank you, Dad. 
Go from the presence of a foolish man when you do not perceive in him the lips of knowledge. Amen. 15.2 The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of fools pours forth foolishness. Amen. So right here, you got... This is one of the big things the Bible talks about with a fool. How you recognize a fool? <laughs> uh, they lie. They 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 make no attempt to guard their tongue. Anything fly out their mouth. Anything and everything. Um, they mock. They make fun of you. You know what I'm saying? They make fun of God. That's a fool, man. Um, they're very argumentative. They talk without thinking or listening. They lash out with pride and they just generally spout out stupidity, right? That's what they do. So that's the one thing the Bible really emphasizes on with the fool. The other thing, number two, is unwillingness to take correction. Unwilling to take correction. Now, all this is in Proverbs. You can write down 1 7, just write it down 1 7, 12 1. Uh, 15, chapter 15, 13, 18, 15, 5, chapter 32. And we can go on and on and on, man. So it's unwillingness to uh, take correction. Time and time and time again, Proverbs says that foolish people, they bristle when others, when others attempt to show them a wiser way to live, they'll argue with people. When you're trying to help them and show them a wiser way to, to live this life that God has given you. They argue with you and stuff. They don't want to help. You know what I mean? They, they, they resent and they reject any kind of constructive criticism or advice. Instead of appreciating it, they resent it. I think people love to be hated. I don't know what's the matter with you people. I think people love to be hated. I mean, what's the matter with you? You know, so... Foolishness needs to be forsaken, needs to be forsaken. Let me ask you something. Think, tell me in the comment section, what does the future look like for foolish people? What's the, what's the future look like for somebody that's foolish, that does that foolish stuff? What's the future look like for that person? Type it in there. Give me something. You know, you're going to get ready to go to 335. Destruction, Wendy says. Mm. Death, bleak, yeah, all that stuff. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despite you. Yeah. Hell, yes, yeah, all that stuff. The, fu the, the future for a foolish person, it looks pretty, according to Proverbs here, it looks pretty doggone grim, pretty dark, yeah. Oh, my goodness. So the fool who refuses to change their ways is headed for what, you know, at 335. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the legacy of fools. Amen. They're headed for shame. Go to 10.8. 10.8. The wise in heart will receive commands, but a prating fool will fall. Uh, so there you go. They're heading for shame. They're heading for ruin. And 1021. 1021. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. Amen. So they're heading for eventually death. Man, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to tell you that I love Proverbs. I really do. And Ecclesiastes, too. We're all over Proverbs, uh, Virginia. Uh, well, I forgot your name, man. Honestly, Virginia, I think it is Virginia. We're in Proverbs. Uh, but Proverbs and Ecclesiastes are great books for wisdom. Usually in Proverbs, you'll see one verse will have, well, well, like, like, look at verse 21. The lips of the righteous feed many. It tells you what's good and positive about a righteous person. Verses, it's always verses, ver the good versus the bad. 21 alone, the lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. It's one or the other through Proverbs. It's this versus that, this versus that. I love Proverbs too, man. 
So Proverbs will present two categories of people, those who are wise and those who are fools, okay? And the former seek wisdom and love and instruction, but the latter neglect discipline and they spurn reproof. And also each can be characterized by their response, maybe to parental and other authority. Uh, some people just can't handle, maybe there's some young people in here that they can't handle school. That was me in school. I, nobody could tell me what to do. Get out of my face kind of thing. That's, that's, I'm not proud of that, but that's how I was. You know, I was locked up my entire June, my entire teenage life, whole thing, whole thing. You know, and heading for adult penitentiary and everything else, man. Just, I did not, I lack, I did not, uh, couldn't handle authority, period. That's a fool. I was a fool, right? So the former bring joy and delight, and the latter brings shame and disgrace and sadness to people. So proverb is urging us to become wise. God is telling, asking us to become wise and to despise the foolish and their folly, Right. It also outlines several steps to becoming wise people rather than falling into foolish ways. So I got four things written out for you. Number one, learn to be careful what you say, like measuring every single word. Learn to be careful what you say. Don't speak unless it's important. If you can't keep your mouth shut or if, you, if you're going to say something stupid all the time, well, then don't speak unless it's very important to do so until you learn. You know what I mean? And, and then and only, you know, in, in order to build up or strengthen somebody, that's what you say. Don't speak. Just shut your mouth. What I'm trying to say if you can't say something nice. And when you do speak, just make sure it's something that will help somebody in a positive note, you know, positive way. And the second thing, be very diligent in all of your work. Be diligent and avoid being lazy. Lazy ain't going to get you nowhere. I'll tell you this much in everything. I ain't pat myself on the back, but I will say I'm, I am proud of myself for this because I've done a lot of crap in my life. I sure have, man, a lot of crap and uh, spent, like I told you, whole juvenile, the whole, all them years locked up, was heading to adult, been in adult jail, but was heading to adult penitentiary, all this crap, man. So there was nothing really to be proud of myself about. I had no, never had no problem with pride. I'll tell you that right now, because there was nothing to be proud about. But I can say this, when I, when I work, I work my tail off. I'll tell you that. When I, when I did hair, I'd, I'd work seven days a week sometimes, 10 hours a day. When I drove the dump truck for the asphalt company, I'd work 65, 70 hours per week. And then I'd go on the night shift crew, whatever they need. Work, work, and with no air conditioning in the truck. And that would be sometimes six, sometimes seven days a week. That would be six days. So I had never had no problem. I never was scared to work. Well, you see how I work now in God's kingdom. I'm not afraid to work, okay? But I am diligent, and I'm definitely not a lazy person. So he's saying, don't strike those, serve. If you're a lazy person, you can't serve and help other people, okay? It ain't just about us. It's about helping other people. When I laid that asphalt, I made roads. I helped other people get to where they're going. I put the roads down. I helped put the roads down. You know what I mean? You know, so stuff like that. So now I serve other people by helping you with the word of God. That's just the one thing I can say. And that's fair. I hope you can say something good about y'all self too. But that's the one good thing I can say. And that's fact. So serve those who you're assigned to with gladness and, and seek to please those whom you're working for. I couldn't stand my boss. I'm going to tell you right now, of course, I wasn't saved when I drove the asphalt truck, but I could not stand my boss. His name was Gordon. I'll never forget him. He hated female. I was in a, it was a big construction company I worked for, y'all. It's called Basic. It was huge. I mean, we had about, I don't even know, 60 trucks, 60 dump trucks and uh, all kinds of stuff, man. Just big, big jobs, High, you know, interstate jobs and all kinds of big jobs, man. And my boss hated female drivers. He hated us, but he had to hire. He had to hire a few. We had like five of us and around 30 other drivers that were men. He hated 
our guts. He hated my guts. You know what I'm saying? But I still, I, I would argue with him and flip him the bird and everything. I'm surprised I didn't get fired because he would about run over my feet and I'd be kicking him and flipping him, everything like that. But I was still striving to uh, make him happy with my work at the end of the day. I didn't care if he liked me or not, but I was like, get the job done where I was still want to, you know, not, I didn't care if I pleased him. I just wanted to have my job done right. And I did do my job right. And then, and then I wanted to hit him in the face and then go home. No, I'm kidding. But he was an evil man. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. But anyway, I wanted to, uh, you want to please your boss, no matter, that's what I did. I wanted to make my job look good, whether I liked him or not. So the third thing is learn to be wise in your handling of your money. Practice good stewardship. Avoid being either a spendthrift or a miser. Okay, take time to learn the proper investment of time and substance and never waste the gifts God has given to you. Don't waste them, okay? And number four, avoid excessiveness of being drunk, excessive alcohol and, and stuff like that, and avoid immoral sexual conduct. Now, I got something else to teach on that because I've got a lot of people that have asked me off to the emails and stuff about all kinds of stuff. Like, I can't believe everybody asked. But you know what? They need to know. Everybody wants to know. Uh, married couples. Now, this is the what God has told me straight up. People ask it, so I'll tell you straight up. Because uh, the Bible says the bed is undefiled for a married couple. So I've actually had people ask me. And I had to pray. I was like, whoa, man. At first, I was like, how do I answer something like this, man? And um, I was like, God, what do I say? What do I say? And uh, he was very straight up about it. So I've had married people say, "Can is the bed undefiled? What does that mean? And can you still have oral sex if you're married? No. No. Undefiled, it means it's, that means God is okay with you laying in that bed with somebody in, 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 a, in a sexual way because he's not okay with it if you're not married. Being married makes that, but to do things that's out of the norm, no, God does not know. No, no, no. Okay. No. So there you go. There you go. I hope that helps somebody. So let's look at uh, 18, Proverbs 10, 18 through 21. Proverbs 10, 18 through 21. Whoever hides hatred has lying lips. And whoever spreads slander is a fool. In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. The heart of the wicked is worth little. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. Amen. All right. Now we live in a day today when it's considered somewhat fashionable, I guess, to have a big mouth. Right. You got a uh, popular radio, um, television, talk show hosts. They make fortunes, man, and build ratings saying some outrageous things, especially in the political realm. Oh, my goodness, man. They just batting it all around. So and uh, psychologists, they encourage people to say whatever's on your mind. They really do say whatever's on your mind in life and in marriage, although well-meaning. That advice can be very destructive and can bring about a great deal of hurt to people. Just to say whatever's on your mind. That can bring a lot of hurt to people. Yeah. So the Bible teaches us something entirely different. Show does. Okay. It says that when we talk a lot and too freely, we're probably going to sin with our words and say something that's not pleasing to God. We're just rattling on, right? Look at verse 19. Can you do that again, please? Sure. In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. Amen. Amen. So what we're told is we're told to watch what we say and other people will think that we're wise. And why do you think it would matter to worry about what other people think? Should we, think, should we worry about what other people think? We have to worry about what other people think. 
because we're supposed to be showing them Jesus, right? We're supposed to, you tell, why do we have to worry about what other people think, you know? Because, Ken, as you've taught us here, our lives are the only Bible that some people will ever read. We're representatives of God. We're supposed to be putting Jesus Christ out to the world. That's right. That's what it is right there. Now, you got to get your scripture notebook, y'all. I'm going to give y'all some scripture. Um, because I ain't going to be able to give a lot because I, I had forgot totally, man. I was ready to do something else Sunday in that barn. And then I forgot way Sunday. It's coming up so fast. I mean, time is flying so fast. I'm like, whoa, this Sunday is, whoa, never mind. Bring your Passover stuff. So get your scripture notebook out, please, y'all. Scripture notebook. And we're very, very in order with that. I, I ask y'all, unless you have, have no other way right now, to have different notebooks for different things like study notebooks for what we just studied. Keep your notes. Scripture notebooks is something different. So you don't get confused. And when everything goes down, the power, the grid and all that stuff, um, Bible's already becoming illegal. It's starting. It's starting. Shanoah showed you where it's starting. And God warned us of that. Um, where is that starting at again? Uh, the volcano, Kim? No. I told you, when I was with Jesus 20 years ago, he showed me where it was going to become a crime to have a Bible. Absolutely. So I've been warning you guys that for the past five years, almost that it's going to become a crime to have a Bible. And then just this past few months ago, it's starting. Where was it starting at? Correct. I apologize. My volume is okay. going out. Uh, it is starting in Canada. Uh, they could be thrown in jail just for quoting the Bible. And in the U.S., feds are monitoring, working with banks to monitor Bible purchases. So if you... Yeah, if you so it's the already... Bible, Oh, sorry, and it's already starting. So this scripture notebook is where you write the scripture down and then in your alone time, so you're not sitting there not studying the Bible, get in there and read that scripture and dissect it. I'm talking about line for line like a detective. Go to the first line, read it, stop, write down what it means to you. Go to the second line, Write down what it means to you, on and on. And then when you're done writing all that down, write down how it, how you're going to apply that to your life and then do it. So here we go. At the top of a blank page, put the worldly mind, the worldly mind, the worldly mind. And here we go. We're going to put your first scripture, just write down the chapter and the verse and you go do it later. Okay, put Philippians 4 8. Philippians 4 8, which says, Brothers and sisters, think about things that are good and worthy of praise. Think about things that are true and honorable and right and pure and beautiful and respected. This way you can help keep your mind set on things above because your minds can wonder on all the bad stuff if you let it. If you let it, the devil can't get in there and control your mind, y'all. You're a Christian. Jesus in there. He don't share no house with the devil. So if your mind wonders, it's because you let it. So don't. Okay. Uh, put Colossians chapter three. There's a lot of verses here. Verse two. Verse five through six. Verses eight through ten. Colossians three, two. Five through six and eight through ten. Here we go again. Think only about the things in heaven and not the things on earth. Yeah. So put, so here goes a command. So put all evil things out of your life. Sexual sinning, put it out. Doing evil, letting evil thoughts control you, put it out. That ain't the devil doing that to you. That's you. See, the devil, if you're a Christian, the devil cannot get inside your head, y'all. He could put things in front of you, but he can't get in there unless you let him in. And when you let him in, you shove Jesus out. You shove the Holy Spirit out. 
It's called quenching the Holy Spirit. So don't let him in. He's, that's why he's telling you this. Think only about the things and he's telling you what to do. He ain't asking you. Think only about the things in heaven, not the things on this earth. So put all evil things out of your life. Put sexual sinning, doing evil, letting evil thoughts control you. Letting evil thoughts, listen, letting evil thoughts control you. If your thoughts are going haywire, it's because you're letting it, okay? Uh, wanting things that are evil and greed. Get it out. This is really serving a false God. These things make God angry. But now also put these things out of your life. Anger. He said, put it out. Anger, bad temper, doing or saying things that hurt other people. Put it out. And using evil words when you talk, curse words and stuff. Do not lie to each other. These are commands. Do not lie to each other. You have, he's like, now listen, pay attention. He said, you left. When you got saved, you left your old sinful life and the things you did before. You left those. Now leave them where they're at. You have begun to live a new life in which you are being made new and are becoming like the one who made you. You are becoming like the one who made you. This new life brings you the true knowledge of God. You want that knowledge? Put Isaiah 26, three through four. Now what you're going to do in your alone time, you're going to, you're going to, you could probably spend an hour on that verse I just gave you, right and dissecting the heck out of that. What it means to you. What is God not telling the world, telling you. And then how are you going to apply your life to that? What kind of things do you need to do? And think about your life, man. Think about stuff you're going through. Think about your life. I got to do it. I had to dissect the heck out of that because I got to deal with a bunch of people on the internet, right? That could really, well, you know what I'm saying? So I had to learn from God how to work through this stuff right here. Besides the way I used to respond. So no, this is stuff to help you personally. Okay. Isaiah 26, three through four. You Lord give true peace to those who depend on you. Amen to that. Because they trust you. So trust the Lord always because he's our rock forever. Let me ask you something, Shanoa. In your opinion, what, what is the joy of the Lord to you? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. To you, what does it mean? Because everybody, I guess it means something different. Everybody. To me, Kim, the joy of the Lord is his word. Knowing it, studying it, living by it, and believing it. Believing that That's every it. word is true. That is the joy of the Lord. That is the joy. So you, people think about the joy of the Lord. Good job. They're looking, they think happiness. Like, well, my, I'm still getting struck by the devil in my life. My marriage ain't good. This and that ain't good. So I don't have the joy of the Lord. Maybe that, that ain't the joy of the Lord. That's called life. The joy of the Lord is knowing God's word, knowing God's promises and choosing to believe it no matter what. Example, example, let's say you're, you're a mother. I hate to say it that way, but that's what happens. Let's say she passes away. It's time for God to take her home. And you know your mama loves some Jesus. You know she was a Christian, no doubt saved. Well, then doggone it, you know where your mama's at then. You know your mama's in heaven with Jesus. You know, you got joy in knowing that, that she's safe, she's okay. It can help you get along with your life now because you got that joy knowing she's fine. So you got to believe God and everything else he said, but you got to know his word in order to have that joy. The joy is knowing his word and believing it. That's your strength right there, okay? Um, do Philippians 2. Three through five. Philippians two, three through five. When you do things, do not let selfishness or pride be your guide. Instead, be humble and give more honor to other people than to yourself. Do not be interested only in your own life, but be interested in the life of others. 
in your lives, you must think and act just like Jesus Christ because we're representing Jesus Christ here. How can you uh, think of other people? You know, what well, God showed us, he teaches everything here we need to learn. He gave us Africa. You too, all y'all listening to me, it's you too because he got you here. He gave us Namibia, Africa, a very specific spot in Africa that he gave just to this church and every single one of you listening to me. And he'll show that to you when you stand in front of him. There's over 55 families God gave us that live in a garbage dump. They live in a garbage dump. It's on JesusDoers.com. They send us pictures every time we help. That that's our little gift back is pictures to we can enjoy seeing what we're what we're you know doing for them. Uh, we built them a church. My little ministry. I want you to look at how look when we built their church. I had like fifteen hundred people on my channel. One thousand five hundred, not fifteen thousand. One thousand five hundred. That's small. And we built their church. Because we're faithful to God, okay? We bought them a tractor trailer truck full of chickens, man. Slam packed full of chickens. So they can have a job or somewhere trying to help them do something. And have food. And then every month now we take care of those kids. And we help those old people too. So, I mean, that's what we do. And that's what you're supposed to do. Listening to me right now. God gave you, like, this is my first time here. It don't matter. You're here now. That's your commission. God commissioned that to you too. So we uh, honor other people more than ourselves because that shows them Jesus. There's nobody else on planet Earth helping that specific location, just us. That's it. That's it. Okay, um, let's do two more. Romans 12, 1 through 2 and 9. Romans 12, 1 through 2 and 9. So brothers and sisters, since God has shown us great mercy, me and you, I beg you to offer your life as a living sacrifice to him. How do you do that? That means put the crap down. Maybe, maybe uh, you're addicted to sex. Put it down. Maybe you're addicted to cigarettes. Put it down. All that stuff. Uh, live your life as a living sacrifice to him because he surely sacrificed for you his life. And some of y'all are like, I can't put a cigarette down. Well, then you ain't ready for it. You ain't ready for him yet. Because when you're ready for him, you're putting it down. Because what you're saying is, I don't have no faith in him to help me. Well, I got faith in everything else. It's not within, well, you, you need to work out your relationship. You need to work it out because long enough, God says, long enough, put it down. Long enough. It's been long enough. Sorry, excuses, man. Your offering must be only for God and it must be pleasing to God. It must be pleasing to him. How do you give an offering that's pleasing to God? How do you do that? Do you know how to know how you give an offering that's pleasing to God? By knowing his will, Kim, and giving something. He doesn't want junk. He wants something that's going to help his kingdom and that. It is a sacrifice. Sacrifice, yeah. And we're doing it because we love him, whatever Amen. it is. Because it, it's a, he said, which is a spiritual way for us to worship. Spiritual way. Okay. He said, do not change yourselves to be like the people of this world, but be changed within by a new way of thinking. We won't thinking like God when we got saved. None of us was. Because we was God's enemies. When we before we got saved, right? He said, then you will change your ways of thinking. Then you will be able to decide what God wants for you. You will know what is good and pleasing to him, what is perfect. Your love must be real. Hate. He wants you to hate what is evil. Hate it. And hold on to what is good. And one more. First John chapter 2. 15 through 17. First John 2, 15 through 17. He said, do not love the world or the things in the world. 
If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. What is what, what is some ways you can love the world? What you think, Shanoa? What are some ways you can love the world? Uh, being concerned about how much money we make. Loving our possessions, you know, wanting the, the, the fastest car, the most expensive home, um, going out, partying, um, you know, fornication. Uh, you know what? Let me, let me clarify some. I don't think it's a sin to be concerned with how much money we make um, because we want to have, you know, a sense of uh, what's the word I need? Responsibility and stuff. Uh, we want to make sure our bills are paid and we want to make sure we have what we need to pay our bills and feed our family and clothe our kids and take care of everything we got. But God should always come first. So it's not a sin to have it or to make it. It's a sin if we don't uh, do God, take care of God first. That That is a sin. The whole thing's a sin. Then, But ways we can love the world. Yeah, you're right with all the rest for sure. And not wrong about that. I think it was just said a little little. little little backwards, but that's okay. I'll fix it. Um, loving the world is, is not being willing to put God first in anything. May could not be money. Maybe it's, uh, maybe, maybe we got church on Friday night like we do, but instead, you know, you're like, well, I'm, I'm going to go out to, to, uh, to whatever. I'm going to go out to, um, I don't know, man, to this uh, theater, you know, they got movie and, 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 uh, you know, whatever tonight, there's nothing wrong with making a date. You understand? Don't, don't get me wrong. But if you do that quite often and you're not coming to church, um, then you're putting the world first ahead of God, man. So don't do that. And there's nothing wrong with coming to church and every now and then, you know, taking, you know, listen, we like here, let me like confuse me. We have church four times a week. Okay. Does that mean you got, if you don't come to every single night that you're not putting God first? No, 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 no. But come at least once, you know, say where's your, your, your night off is Friday and we'll never see you, you know, every now and then, but you choose to go out to this place, this restaurant that has, you know, whatever, just don't put the world ahead of God as simple as that. He said, none of these come from the feast. Wait, let me back up. These are, okay, let me back up. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. These are the ways of the world. Here we go. Wanting to please our sinful selves. Well, I want that. I want this. This is what I want. I don't care if God likes this or not. This is what I want, right? Uh, wanting the sinful things that we see and being too proud of what we have. None of these come from the Father, but all of them come from the world. The world and everything that people want in it are passing away. But the person who does what God wants, we live forever. See what I mean, y'all? And doggone it, I'm going for life, baby. I'm going for eternal life. Ain't nobody taking me down to the grave. Hey, forget it. But not me, not you, not nobody. Not the devil, nobody. And uh, you got to make that decision for yourself too, y'all. You have to be the one to do it, man. And then walk in it. Because when you do make that decision, the devil going to make it real hard on you now. He going to throw everything at you, mud pies, uh, everything. Everything he could think of. Pew, pew, pew. But man, that's why Jesus said, I give you help. I give you my spirit. My spirit. We got God's spirit. You know what I mean? And we could do it. And then we have each other. We're supposed to have each other. You understand? We're not supposed to just show up to the barn and, and never reach out to each other. Because if you do that, we don't have each other. You're supposed to have each other's emails, uh, encourage each other, whatever. Sometimes check on each other, something, man. We're supposed to have each other's back. If we don't, then you're not walking in God's will. I'll tell you that because there may be some people. There's some people suffering. I can't talk to everybody. You know what I mean? I know that's a fact. When I got a whole church full of people that, that should be helping, there's a lot many ways we're supposed to be helping each other. And uh, that's how we can, we all have the spirit of God. We are supposed to be helping each other, period. Okay. So, but God will help us. That's his spirit. That's his spirit in me. It's his spirit in Shanoa. It's his spirit in you. And uh, shoot, I need someone to talk to sometime myself. I mean, even though God has ordained me, don't mean I don't need someone to talk to. You know what I mean? 
on this end of the spectrum, we don't really have people to talk to. You guys do. And it's weird for me being on this end because it's the truth. We don't have people to talk to. If, if you need to talk to somebody, you must not be anointed enough or something like that. Like we ain't human. You know, that's the way that goes. So God will give us like a little, I don't know what, but we all need people to talk to. Okay. That's the way it is. Anointed or not. Okay. So if there's anybody in this room right now that if you were to die right now, man, because you could, you could, you could, and you don't know for a fact that you would go to heaven then you need to know that right now before we hang up. You need to go and get that straightened out, man. So if you're not sure, don't be embarrassed. Forget that crazy crap. Say, you know, let me know. Say, I want to be saved. If you don't know, say, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. If that's you, you don't know if you're saved, type it in there, man, because God is talking to you right now. If that's you, say, I want to be saved. Type it. If you confess your faults to one another, you know, that's what we're supposed to do. We all, amen. You know, we confess your faults. You confess with your mouth. And there's witnesses for that. There we are. Okay. And the whole host of heaven's watching you. And then you go and believe in your heart. That's your choice. But then you need to just, okay, I'm going to go ahead. So we, I got to get my shower and stuff. So if that's you and you don't want to say that, just say, Jesus, please, please forgive me. I'm so sorry that I have sinned against you. But I want to change that. I want to make you Lord of my life. And I ask you to teach me. And thank you so much for saving me and giving me your spirit. Thank you. Monica, right now, say this. Repeat this, honey. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Say, Jesus, forgive me. I'm so sorry. Mean it from your heart. I'm so sorry. Save my soul. Forgive me for sinning against you. Save me. And make me Lord of your life. I'm sorry. Be, I'm sorry. I'm getting twisted here. Y'all just excuse me here. I'm reading y'all stuff at the same time. Sorry. Jesus, forgive me for my sins and save my soul. And be Lord of my life. And thank you so much for setting me free from the bondage of sin. Thank you for saving me. Now teach me. I want to seek your will your way, your purposes. Thank you for saving me in Jesus name. And that's it. You just got saved young lady. If you were to die right now, which you could, you would immediately go to heaven with Jesus. But now from this time, thank you, Jesus. He said, now it's time to get baptized in the water that will save you. You just got half a heart. You're saved, but you got half a heart. You got to do the rest of it. And that is now from this day forward, grow, get in the word, get you. I, I encourage you to get a study Bible, a King James version, study Bible, study Bible, because it has a little side notes to help you a little bit. And the, in the ink, the English is just easy to understand. It don't have the dustes and douses and stuff like that. Um, yeah, a study Bible. And we recommend the fire study Bible. When I used to buy people on my channel Bibles when I, before I got Africa, that's what I got them, this the uh, fire study Bible. It's really good. And they're about 30 bucks. But we're so glad the whole host of heaven is cheering you on right now, the Bible says. And they are. They just saw you give your life to Jesus. Girl, you just got your name written in the Lamb's book of life. Now, that is special right there. Jesus running after you now, girl. He's like, I got you. I got you. And you would thank God for that. So we want to see you in the barn. I want you to come to studies and we're going to get you baptized in the water. First, we're going to, if you want to, we'll give you an actual physical baptism. You just bring, turn your camera on and head over the sink or dip yourself in the bathtub, whatever you want. And we will baptize you there. Now, but the baptism in the living water that you have to have to go to heaven is knowing his word and living by it. It's the Bible. And living by it, that's the living water. You have to be baptized in that. So we're going to help you with that if you come to church. And we have it. Friday night, tell them, Shanoa, when, tell her when we have church. Sorry. Absolutely. We're, we're, Monica, we're so glad, sister, that you spoke up and you got saved. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Friday and Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
and Wednesdays uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But if you go to JesusDoors.com, thank you, Wendy, for typing that in. That's our website. Just scroll down the homepage, right under the picture of the big red barn, you'll see a link. If you click that link, it'll bring you right into our Google Meets room, which we call the barn. And the hours that we're going to be in there uh, for service are right there under the link. God bless you. Amen. JesusDoers.com. It's all right there. Go look because we have a great group of people that come together. There's a bit anywhere between 30 to 50 of us that usually come together. And uh, we sing, we worship, we pray, we study. On Saturday night, we watch movies together. And then after the movie, we fellowship and just have a good time. It's kind of like a break. Saturday night's like a break. You don't want to get burnt out or nothing. But uh, we have a good group of people. Church doesn't mean it's a building. A building don't make it church at all. You know, but church is us. We are the church. And this is how God gave it to us. And he brought you here. So praise God. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time live on YouTube. And then again tomorrow night at 9 p.m. and then 10 p.m. like we are now. We come on three times a day live. 2 p.m., 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Do we have that on the website? No, we don't have that on the website. We need to put that on. I will put it up there uh, tonight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Wendy. Go see my testimony. Um, I don't know, man. Yeah, it's on. uh, Well, it's on Deep Believer. It's all over the place. It's on the website. You'll see where I tried to take my life 20 years ago and was with Jesus Christ and anointed by his very hand. And that's why I'm here. Okay, so God bless you guys. All the rest of you go in peace in the name of Jesus Christ. And I I plead the blood of Jesus over every single one of you of your mind, body, soul, spirit in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, that no weapon formed against you will ever prosper because we serve the living God that's always running after us. Never leave us, never forsake us. And we thank you, Jesus, for being who you are in Jesus name. Go in peace, everybody. See you guys tomorrow, too. God bless everybody. Thank you, moderators. Thank you, Shanoa.